Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're starting off, of course, over here at the castle. It is still castle week and it looks like we may be having castle week for a little while longer. I think we are going to continue this project into next week. I still have so much stuff that I want to do on this castle and as you can tell, I haven't even finished the roofs yet. There are so many different roofs in here that need to come together and I'm pre pretty much like figuring out other sections of the castle to add in as I go. That's part of the creative process of building all the time. It's just coming up with new stuff to add in as you build and modifying the structure of the foundation we put down originally to add in new features and make this whole place a little bit exciting. So I'll do a quick roundup of the extra stuff I've done before we get on with what we're doing today. For a start, I ended up liking this roof so much that I've applied it to this tower here as well, except rotated by 90 degrees so you can kind of see the bone side of that tower from the front and I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. Around the corner here, I've actually added on a roof to this section here on the opposite side of the the bit where the archers are looking down over the courtyard. And this is going to be the barracks. I still need to work on a couple of things about this roof. I did want it supported from below by stuff, which is why it's overhanging kind of weirdly right now. And I might change the shape of this building up a little bit because the shape of the... Oh, I just ran through a horse. <laughs> the shape of the roof on the opposite side was a certain way. And so the wall should probably come out a couple of blocks extra in these occasional moments here and there. And this, this horse is clearly quite keen on sticking around. So uh, further around here, we've got a couple other roofs added in. I've got this one coming off here, off this small building that's probably going to be the entrance to whatever this larger building is towards the back. And I've started work on the residential wing. We've got a tower that's kind of creeping up the wall on this left-hand side here. And then on that side there, we actually have a, a large pitch roof coming into frame with the the bone structure there as well. And this one kind of comes around the corner a little bit, attaches to this wall because this room was on a, uh, a bit of a diagonal and it's looking pretty great so far. But rather than spend a whole extra episode on roofs, because I think you guys get the idea by now, what we're going to do today is jumping ahead a couple of steps, but I feel like if I continue to fill in the roofs in the background, this will be okay. What we're gonna do today is start to focus on detailing some of these bare stone walls of the castle and adding in a few things that will really start to bring the castle to life and make it look a bit less like a series of stone cubes and more like a structure that has been here for years. And for that, we have ourselves a little detailing box here that is just going to be really focused on the castle walls themselves. Just different stone types and variants that we can add in that will really start to bring some detail and clarity to the walls and make them look like structures instead of just collections of stone lumped together. So we've got some stone brick. And as you can see, I've already been throwing that into this tower in particular. I think we did this a couple of streams ago just so that you can, you can kind of see the detail creeping in. And we're applying the same approach approach to this that we applied to some of the walls that I've set up already around Founders Forge in that just a couple of stone bricks thrown into a larger regular stone area just for detail can imply the texture of the wall has a ton of these bricks in it without just making the entire thing out of stone bricks which as you can see doesn't look terrible it's nice that the stone bricks have a little bit more structure to them a bit more shading but Typically speaking, it's going to look a little better if you just have a peppering of this texture here and there without completely overwhelming people. This is kind of like, uh, my friend Joel describes this as the 70-30 rule. It's something that gets applied in art a lot, where you want 30% of this area to be detailed so that you can get the idea of what the materials are that go into this, and then the 70% needs to be smooth and like it gives your eyes time to rest basically is the is the idea so you, you spend less time with the detailed thing and more about the overall form of the place and so we're not going to be spamming this wall absolutely full of all of these materials instead we're going to be sticking them here and there replacing a couple of blocks at a time going through basically all of the walls in this castle and doing something along these lines but we're not going to do it completely randomly we are going to be doing it in a way that kind of has a formula to it that you maybe might apply. For a start, with stuff like mossy stone bricks, which are a fantastic block, and I'm happy to say they look even better in the new texture pack, you can take out some around the bottom of these towers where they meet the grass, because we can build leaves up around here, we can even build the grass terrain or grow some long grass around here, and it's going to feel like these bricks in particular have been affected by the greenery growing up from the floor. 
it's also going to be worthwhile putting some of those towards the tops of the walls as well, where moss might be growing because of stuff like rainfall. Moss is just going to grow in areas where there is a little bit of moisture or there is already plant life. And so by adding moss in patches like so, we can kind of give the impression that this section of the wall is growing over slightly, maybe even put down some bushes around that, and then maybe add in a couple of cracked stone bricks where somebody has decided to wipe the moss off and kind of get rid of it, but the moss has worked its way into the cracks. So around the sides here, maybe a couple of blocks out here and there as well, we can start to add in some cracked stone bricks for detail, and then further out, once we get to the slightly cleaner stuff, the stuff that hasn't been affected by the moss, we can add in our regular stone bricks, and already that is starting to feel like a little bit more coherent. Stepping back and looking at these now, my main problem is that they feel a little too square. Even with the corners being slightly rounded, taking out that side block there, it still feels a little bit too square. So what I'm actually going to do is pop out some of the bricks that I've just placed in, and I think we might have to deal with a couple of zombies here and there in a second. What we're actually going to do is maybe fill this back in with stone just so we have a foundation to work with. Take some of these out though, and we're going to build up a layer over the top of this, the start, starting to kind of skin over what we've already built, giving it a little bit of depth and giving it some dimension to it. So starting to round out the base of this tower with additional fortifications and maybe even coming up a couple of blocks here and there and then adding some stairs to the top of this so it looks like it is a bit more firmly attached to the wall, makes it look a little bit more intentional. A little bit of andesite in for variation in the stone there, and that's starting to look a little bit more like the base of a tower and not just a big square stone box. A little bit more texture in the tops of the walls there as well, and then we can start to add a few more details using things like cobblestone walls and maybe even some wood for reinforcement. One of the more traditional approaches you can take if you're building an older castle is to have archery slits here that the archers could potentially fire arrows through and all you need for that is two stairs one inverted one regular side up and if we come down here still needs a little bit of texture on the top but there you go you've got some holes for the archers to shoot their arrows out through should be nice and straightforward there you could also decorate those with trap doors or something like that so that they could be opened and closed if you want to and after a few short minutes this is really starting to pop a little bit i've added some stone buttons to the end of the log textures to make it look like they're supported by metal posts down the middle. We've also got some of those stone buttons just poking out from the wall here and there as occasional loose bricks. And depending on whether or not you want a flatter surface than this, you might want to take those details out. The shadowiness of them is a little bit weird in contrast to the rest of it, but I kind of like that. I like having that sticking out as the odd detail. So I'm gonna go around more or less the entire castle, finishing off roofs and doing a little bit more detailing here and there. Gonna do a lot of that off camera, probably going to do it on a live stream that was probably happened yesterday by the time this video comes out. But if you wanna catch live streams live, by the way, I don't mention this all that often, although the link is usually in the description, it's twitch.tv slash pixelriffs. If you wanna head over there and drop a follow, we make progress off camera, never anything like super important. It's usually just building progress and resource gathering and stuff like that. But if you wanna drop a follow, feel free. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of the detail work around here, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey folks, welcome back, and this place is looking a little different, as I'm sure you can see. The same, but somehow different. We've done a little bit of work on a live stream here, just getting all of the details ironed out for some of these foremost towers around here and some of the walls and stuff as well. Now, a few people have pointed out that yes, the walls aren't going to be all that effective if this is like a realistic castle that we have in mind here, but believe me, it's not. It's not It's not meant to be adhering to any kind of realism. It's not meant to be like the walls are impregnable. It's not supposed to have a moat around the outside, not least because we've got this ravine here and everything. This is not meant to be a defended castle, even though I've talked a little bit about some of these areas being more defensive and so forth. It's more of a concept than it is a reality. It's a lot more about just the vibe of the place and certain elements of it that I want to portray as we go rather than it being a coherent picture. It's all meant to just be 
a bit of fun, putting it that way. This is all a bit of fun. And I hope you guys have been having fun watching this all come together because I've sure been having fun building it. Let's take a quick look at the gate tower we have over here. We have a similar one on the opposite side and there is plenty of room in here for us to imagine at least a mechanism to drop the gate from here. A few people have asked if I'm going to be doing some sort of redstone device for this and the answer to that is probably no, mainly because I don't really have the smarts to make anything this sophisticated quite yet. Maybe in future we will revisit it and we will do something redstone-y with it, but for the time being at least, I'm pretty happy just making this an aesthetic thing, maybe making some kind of permanently open portcullis here, or making a larger gateway. One of the things I definitely want to do further down the line is make a giant wooden door in between these two towers, or rather on these two walls over here, so that there's like a giant like spruce door or something like that taking us through to the room that has the nether portal in but i'm getting ahead of myself here let's go back to look at the the outside of the walls for a second because there have been a few of these towers around the structure and while we haven't detailed every single one of them and in fact some of the roofs towards the back are not even in place yet there are a few variations that we can put in here like this tower obviously has a slightly different top part here, and I don't know, maybe this can be some sort of botanist's tower. And for that, we want to have some overgrowth coming out around the outside. Botany is obviously like a study of plants and so forth, so what I was thinking is maybe we can have some some stuff growing out of this tower a little bit in, in, in a kind of characteristic way where we can just have it dangling from the outside here and maybe even work elements of that into the structure, maybe have more vines growing up it, that kind of thing. We could definitely do well to swap out some of the stone brick around here for some more of that mossy stone brick, for example, or even mossy cobblestone if I've got it on me. But right now, we'll just put the mossy brick in here like so. As you can see, we've started to swap out a lot of the blocks of stone in here for the detail blocks, the ones that are really going to make things stand out a little bit more. Same goes for the walls connecting these on either side. We've got a little bit of that going on. And where? it hits the ravine. This tower on the far right hand side here has actually had a few more cracks in it and a few more crumbly sections. There are sections that I've swapped out for cobblestone which I really haven't used anywhere else on this build and the reason for the cobblestone here is that this tower is right at the edge of the ravine. Now the ravine is filled with magma and potentially something that's causing a vast amount of smoke to billow up from the bottom of the ravine. My idea is that whatever like energy source that is down here generates a huge amount of heat. And so we come to this tower because this tower sits at the very end of the ravine and the idea that the heat could be affecting the structural stability of the tower, the fact that it's been built like each one of these but potentially could be suffering a little bit more from the stresses of being so close to such a high heat source means that it could start to crumble a little bit. It becomes a little more unstable. Things break down and start to crumble into the ravine a little bit. And maybe in the fullness of time, we could give the illusion after a little bit of extra block placement that this tower has been repaired a few times and could maybe have like a scaffold of sorts around it. Now, of course, when I think scaffold, I think, well, there's a scaffold block coming to 1.14 in the next update. And with the 1.14 pre-releases, basically on our doorstep at the time of this recording, we are potentially going to be able to put some scaffolding around this and make it look like the tower is under repair or under construction or something like that in the near future. So, Kind of sitting on that idea, waiting for 1.14 to actually come out. In the meantime, over here on the opposite side, we have this special little building over here. Now, unlike the rest of the structures on this front wall, this one was more of a building than a tower. It was more of like a kind of uniform building, sort of four square sides and so forth, rather than being one of these, you know, gatekeeping towers. And I think this turned out into a really interesting idea. This it looked to me like a sort of church or chapel kind of situation. Maybe not a traditional kind of thing, not going after any particular religion or anything, but it felt to me like the, the end sticking out here just felt like the end of a church. And instead of a stained glass window being in here, because obviously, as people will point out, it's not particularly defensible to have a giant window right here on the edge of this structure where people are not going to want to have people like throwing rocks through the stained glass window if they're mad at the decisions that people have been making in the castle. So instead of that, I kept the wall all as plain stone, framed it out here in some stone brick, very simply without, you know, messing around with too many slabs and stairs and that kind of thing. We've just created this kind of archway, making that end stone wall into a panel. 
and grown vines and stuff up it. The main idea behind introducing so much nature to this is maybe if it's not a real world religion of sorts, maybe these folks in this castle could be more in worship of nature. It would make a little bit of sense considering the amount of value they place on stuff like the nether, which feels fairly unnatural. They, they treat that stuff as a source of power, but they are mining out the natural world for its power, and maybe just maybe there are people who think maybe the natural world should be a little bit more respected. So what I did here was I worked in a few more mossy stone bricks here and there into the structure of the thing, covered the roof with these trailing uh, leaf blocks, which actually give a really nice contrast to all of the nether brick around here. And we've dotted it around the place, built it up around the walls as well. And we've created this little door here because I realized that unless there was a door here, <laughs> which there isn't really going to be considering that there is a, a wall right here. And oh, those zombie noises are frightening me. I think there are zombies in, yep, in here. <laughs> it looks like we have a little bit of spawnable space in some of these spots. But right here... We kind of needed a door, and the only other place that you could get access to this building from inside the walls of the castle itself was through this corner. So instead of just walling it off like so, I decided we would probably open this out into a, uh, a doorway here, and then we could probably fit this with some sort of, I don't know, some sort of furniture in here, maybe some rows of pews and that kind of thing, but we won't worry too much about that. The diagonal build is going to make it a little bit awkward to decorate the interior of this place, but I have a feeling we'll come up with some stuff in the fullness of time. So that's kind of where we're at with the outside of this area as well, and we've done bits and pieces here and there. I'll talk about that tower in a second, but as you get onto the inside of this castle, you will notice that I haven't really done a huge amount elsewhere. And that is because this detailing stuff, even on the inside of these walls, actually, the detailing stuff really does take a lot of time. It's a lot of trial and error, a lot of stepping back and looking at what you've done and deciding whether or not it fits exactly what your image of this place is. And it takes a lot of time. So it's gonna be something that I continue to do into next week. I'll probably spend a fair amount of this weekend chipping away at the little details around here, sorting out where I want to build some of the other features. And that we will do a little bit more of the structural work on the castle next week. But the towers and so forth around the back here are coming together. We are probably going to have to leave a couple of these towers kind of untouched in a way, like, or, or not, if not untouched, then at least without these pointy roofs. We're going to try and vary up the roof styles of some of these towers a little bit because they are looking fairly similar for the most part, and I don't want absolutely everything to be a tower. However, this one here on the left-hand side is something that I came up with on the stream, and it's a personal favorite now. I, it's it's really quite it's really quite appealing to me at this point. This tower here is branching off of one of these main sections here, and this is what I want to start to do a little bit more of as well. If we have a large structure like this, having it support one of these kind of like offshoots and adding a new dimension to the place, something that we couldn't really include on the floor plan because I didn't quite see how high this stuff was going to go. The same goes for bridges between some of these towers and between the buildings, just kind of giving the whole place a little bit more of a flow that we really couldn't mark out super well on the floor plan just because of the way things were arranged. I think this archers section over here, the bit where the bowmen are guarding the central gate, could easily connect to this tower over here. Likewise, that one there could connect to this tower. We could have a uh, an archway over the gate, a kind of walkway, and we can find ways to connect some of these buildings and give this whole place a little bit more of a built-up feel as we go. So this is what I mean when I say that this project is not even halfway done at this stage. <laughs> I think the progress on it can probably accelerate over the next few episodes, and I'm sure when we come back next week, I'll have made a little bit more progress here, but... Yeah, there is, there's a whole bunch of stuff we have left to do if we want to make this into a viable castle project. And that's why Castle Week is going to definitely extend into next week. But for now, I think this is looking really great. It's definitely adding so much to the area to have stuff like this. And it's going to be really great to fill out the rest of Founders Forge now that we have this structure coming together over here. I'm going <laughs> to run in and sleep a second because I really need to do a little bit more work lighting up this area so that we don't have to deal with quite so many mob spawns. The roof on the back of this tower is not quite finished because I'm not entirely sure how I want it to interact with the adjacent section of the build, and I've just run out of fireworks, so I need to go and grab some more from the ender chest. But yeah, it's, it's not quite finished there, but it should be... Whoa! <laughs> okay. Yeah, it should be uh, fairly easy to finish off once we have an idea of how 
the rest of that building is going to go. And I can't shoot the broadside of this creeper for the life of me. There we go. Get wrecked. <laughs> Hopefully he was killed by the full damage. Now, the problem with a lot of this, of course, as you can no doubt see from the fact that we have creepers spawning on the roof there, is that it's not entirely spawn proof. And there are a few options that we could go to just to, uh, to, to limit the amount of mob spawns in this area. Frankly, though, I'm not that interested in spamming the roofs with string or torches or carpets or anything that's really going to hurt the look of it and string would maybe be one of the better options because let's face it it's not going to show up all that much from a distance but even so it's one of those things that if you know it's there you can't help but look at it it's one of those details that is really difficult to not notice once you've spotted it and this would take an awful lot of string because as you can see this is an, an awfully large build at this stage imagine the amount of stone we had to gather for making this entire place so far multiply that by a factor of i don't know how much because each of these sections is also going to have a roof and you can probably see quite why it's going to take an awful lot of stuff to mob spawn proof this place in its entirety so I think I might leave it. <laughs> I think I might run the risk of occasional creeper explosions. And I'm a pretty careful player, so I don't need to worry too much about that stuff. I've had my builds blown up by creepers precisely twice, I think, since we started this world. So I think we should be okay. But on the off chance that stuff like that does happen, maybe we can start to light the area up a little bit more, I guess, like in keeping with the build itself. Like in, in the cases of these towers where we have torches on the inside, we're not going to be able to really have that reflected in the roof unless there are areas we could hide glowstone or sea lanterns or anything like that. But the chances are we can do something about that. Maybe we could hide glowstone under trapdoors here and there, especially along these open roof ridges where we don't have too much else going on. Maybe we could work some sea lanterns or some redstone lamps into the body of these towers here and there just to, to kind of complement the design a little bit and still allow for a, a, a lack of mob spawning in, in areas like that where there's clearly a little gap there on top that the uh, the mobs could spawn. Maybe we can do a little bit more work with slabs once the red nether brick slabs get brought into the game. Maybe we can do a little bit more work with that. But in the meantime, I think we are going to have to grin and bear it. And considering I do most of my building during the day, I don't need to worry too much about mob spawns the rest of the time. The main place I need to worry about mob spawning is inside <laughs> most of these buildings in the first place. Because as you saw a few minutes ago, I still need to do a little bit more work lighting these up, but hopefully we should be able to take care of that and have a mob-free experience as we continue to build the castle. But as this first castle week draws to a close, I feel like it's probably time to bust out the pretty shaders and give you guys a quick tour of all of the stuff I've done so far before we wrap up today's episode.
And that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. Thank you so much for watching as we complete week one of Castle Week. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and stay tuned for more Castle Week next week. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you guys there. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.